Hannah here. So I am the blogger over at The Perspective of a Drama Queen, which if I figure out how to put the text in, the link should be right here in a little box. For this week's episode, which is the inaugural episode, obviously, I'm picking a book that I just read last week. It is the sequel to this fabulous book right here, The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. Rutkowski? I feel bad when I don't know how to pronounce the author's names. But I absolutely loved this book. One of my favorite books of 2014. Um, it's kind of a high fantasy-ish, which I really don't usually go for, but this one is just done so well. And so the sequel is this book right here called The Winner's Crime. I'm going to start off by reading a little bit from the inside cover just so you can get a feel for the book a little bit. A royal wedding means one celebration after another. Balls, fireworks, and revelry until dawn. But to Kestrel it means living in a cage of her own making. As the wedding approaches she aches to tell Aaron the truth about her engagement, that she agreed to marry the crown prince in exchange for Aaron's freedom. But can Kestrel trust Aaron? Can she even trust herself? And so let's talk a little about The Winner's Crime. Obviously, it's the sequel, and it's hard to describe this book, actually. So I'll just kind of talk about the characters. First, you have Kestrel, who is pretty much everything you want in a leading lady. She is strong and intelligent and powerful, and she's really um, independent, and she really makes a lot of tough decisions, and she always is very justified in her decisions, regardless of not if you like it or the people in the book like it she has a reason and I really really enjoy that in the book um so I really like her she's really cool another character who is the the, the main guy in there is Aaron A-R-I-N who Aaron it is so hard to describe Aaron because oh, he's like frustrating you know he's like one of those guys that you're just like Okay, calm down, take a second, let's think this through. But then he doesn't. Like, he'll just, like, run off. And he'll be like, whoa, come back. And then he, he doesn't. So. But you know what? I, I still ship them as a couple. And if you don't know what shipping is, shipping is, like, when you feel really strongly that two characters should be together, like, forever and ever. That's what shipping is. And so I ship them. Like, not super hard. Like, this isn't a um, Juliet and Adam ship from... To Hadamafi series, the Shatter Me series. I'm still upset about that one. That's life. But anyway, so I like Erin and Kestrel together. I think they are a good match for each other. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to spoil what happens because spoilers go to book jail. And so I don't want to end up in book jail. I have tickets to go see the Red Sox this summer. Can't. And be in book jail when the Red Sox are playing. They don't get TV in book jail. The Winner's Crime was perfectly adequate. That's how I describe it. Perfectly adequate. Nothing really wrong with it. It's that bridge book in the trilogy that it's, I call it a bridge book because you have like the, the first book, then you have the third book, and then you have the second book as the bridge connecting everything. And it's got to be there. And there are some things that you're just like, okay, can we, you know, move on to the more exciting stuff? Like, come on. But it, it has to be there. There's a lot of politics in this book. Very little romance. And there was a pretty hefty dose of that romance leading up to the romantic scenes. A lot of romantic te tensions in the first book. And I was kind of missing that in the second book. Kind of people on Goodreads were like, oh, I really like that. It's all about like politics and the kind of schematics of the world. And I was kind of like, eh. yeah, that's all fine and dandy. But Aaron and Kestrel, yeah. You know, it was really well written. I like the voice of it. It's a third person POV, which a lot of times ends up not having the emotion. You don't get inside that character's head like you do with the first person POV. But um, I thought it was really well done. I really like the writing. So props to the author for that. Well, thanks for checking out the vlog. It was really fun. I had a good time. I thought I thought this was good. Yay. Hope you liked it. Um, I'll be back next week. This will probably be a regular segment we're going to do, like, try to do every Friday for Fabulous Review Friday. So, I'm Hannah, signing off. Um, check out my blog. Link's in the box below. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and I'm on Goodreads as well. Bye, guys.